Murphy's Law dictates in the video surveillance world, you are going to have an incident where you don't have a camera. This is why as security professionals, we always leave room for expansion. That said, when is enough enough? When is it that you've bought like too many video surveillance cameras? And then when you do have an incident that's off camera, how are you grabbing the evidence that's required? For example, if somebody tags up your uh, one of your walls with graffiti, or there's a dumpster fire or a, a window that got broken, and the footage was just a bit too far off camera, what are you doing to grab that evidence? Well, chances are you're going to use one of these. So here's the problem. Sure, you could just take a smartphone, take a bunch of pictures, take a bunch of cell phone video, and upload them to your cloud or upload them to a network shared drive or send them via email. But the issue is, once you've sent that email, once you've uploaded it to the cloud, you've lost chain of custody. You don't know now who has access to those images and what they are doing with those images. This puts your organization at substantial risk. Or consider this, it's a campus and a protest has just broken out. Sure, you've got cameras that are covering the aerial angles, but you'd love to get eyes on the scene. You'd love to see what your officers are actually looking at. Now, sure, you could deploy body wearable cameras, but now you've got to purchase and deploy a body wearable camera for every one of your officers. Also, things to consider. Is my network robust enough for live video to be streaming? Did the device that I choose come with the capability of even live streaming? Because most body wearable cameras are used for forensics after the fact. If the answers to these questions are like, I don't know, or maybe I don't have the budget, there is a better way. And of course, that better way is in Genetech Security Center. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these. So let's dive in. So let's jump into config tool first, and I'll show you where you need to go to set all this up. Before a bunch of you start leaving comments down below, why didn't you tell me this was an optional feature? Okay, full disclosure. What we're really talking about here is the mobile application. So Genetech Mobile enables you to obviously see all your cameras, see all of your doors, um, you know, see all your different areas, see all of your maps. There are tremendous features in the mobile application. But what I notice is not a lot of people actually use the mobile app. It's one of those things like in a, in a specification, an RFP, it's called out like I want the mobile application, but it's rarely used. And I, I kind of wonder why. And with this particular feature of being able to turn the smartphone using the mobile app into another camera on the system, if that might not get more of you to start adopting the mobile application. The way that the mobile app is sold is on a per client connection basis. So you can have the mobile application running on a thousand phones, but you can only have a certain number of concurrent users logged in at any given point in time, just like the thick client, right? So if you're licensed for Genetech Security Center system, you get five client connections out of the gate. With mobile, you just license how many mobile operators you want to have, and now they have full-blown access to the mobile application. The mobile application is based on the user privileges of the security center user. So if you've got you know, an admin user or a, a officer user or a receptionist user, when they log in to the mobile app, they're using their same exact credentials as they would to log in to the thick client. So nothing different there. So jumping back into config tool. So once you're licensed for the mobile application, then you're gonna wanna enable the mobile server role in system. So, and you would just come down here to add entity and just add it. Obviously mine's already added, so it's not showing up here. The mobile server can also be decoupled from the main directory, right? So you could run it on its own directory if you have a ton of mobile users. And if we come here to properties, you could see all the different features that are currently enabled. And here's the, the big one right here, what this video is all about. Device camera streaming. With that enabled, 
that is going to allow the camera on my smartphone to be used as another camera in Security Center. Also important to note here, this one down here, video. This is a sort of a video configuration like you would uh, normally go to the video, um, the video unit in the archiver, you know, pick a camera and come to this, right? And you'd pick your resolutions, you pick your frame rates and all of that. In system, if we come over here to this little cog, you can see what are the Wi-Fi video settings? Well, we're gonna use this resolution and this frame rate. And what are our settings over cellular? You know, maybe we wanna go with a lower resolution and lower frame rate. If you're at all interested in setting up multiple streams and using automatic stream selection, I'll leave a link up here to check out my last video where we did a deep dive into automatic stream selection. So literally like that's it. You enable the mobile server role, you configure this. I mean, out of the box, I think all of this stuff is already pre-selected and set up for you. I don't remember ever really messing with any of this stuff. So enable it, check the features that you want, uncheck the features you don't want, and then move on. So now jumping back into Security Desk, the first time you turn on a mobile video unit or a, a smartphone camera, a new entity will appear. And that entity will be the name of the, the device. So you'll see on here, it'll say Felice's iPhone. I'm Felice, yes, that's, that's my real name. Uh, but you can call me Phil. And what I've done here to make it easy for myself is obviously I've already used my mobile camera before, but I've set up a separate area inside of my main demo area called mobile phones. And when I pull this down, you could see Felice's iPhone is there. Now it's red because it's not on right now, but when I turn it on, you'll see that device will go white and it'll start streaming. So as you can see here, I am in the Genetech mobile application. I am using an iPhone. The interface is more or less exactly the same on Android. So you could see this is very similar to what you would see if you were logging into Security Desk, right? So we're, we're throwing up the IP address of the directory, the username that I'm gonna use, as well as the password. And when I select password, I'm going to put in my password. It's gonna check my face, right? So two-factor authentication, that's cool. And it's gonna bring me to my map. Like that's the first thing that you're gonna see separate video on maps and the mobile application and like all the fine detail and the nitty gritty there. Uh, this video again is all about streaming the smartphone camera to Security Center. So now all I have to do is go up to the hamburger menu on the upper left hand side and you could see like here's my area view, here are all the different alarms and alerts, various reports that I could possibly run, but you see all the way down below and yes uh, the administrator is Charles Miner from, from the office thought that would be a, a fun reference for those who catch it. Um, but you can see all the way down below, stream is off right now. And you can see next to it, hot actions. So uh, separate video, I'll throw a link up top as well for the video that I did on custom hot actions. So we can run our hot actions right through the mobile application. That's cool. Or enable threat levels from the mobile app. So we can initiate panic events, threat levels of all different shapes and sizes right from the mobile application. Uh, but again, streaming video. So let's hit stream video. I'm gonna flip the camera around so that you'll see my face and then hit the record button. Now, before I do that, let me drag my iPhone into a tile. And you can see like nothing's there. It's waiting for the offline source, right? So I'm gonna hit record. And here I am on the phone. Give it a second. And there I am in the security desk application. Boy, oh boy, it's more fills than you've ever wanted to see in your life, right? Uh, and now, as you can see, video is being laid down here. I'll turn around so you could see a, a little bit uh, sneak peek of my office. Yes, I am in a basement. Yes, it is a bit dungeony, but uh, you know, all all you guys get to see is this stuff behind me. You don't see all the the other stuff over there. All the uh, the, the stuff that makes the sausage, right? You don't, you never want to see how the sausage gets made. So anyway, that's it. I'm in, I'm done. I'm recording video 
from my phone to the archiver. Nothing is being recorded on the device itself. I cannot stress this fact uh, more clearly. Nothing is on the phone. Everything is in the archiver now. So you have a watermarked, encrypted, court admissible piece of evidence that is just like a video surveillance camera, except it came from my iPhone. And so now my incident is done. I've captured whatever evidence I wanted to catch. Um, you know, I've, I've gathered whatever evidence there was from, from this particular incident. I simply come down to the stop button and hit stop. And I'll hit done. So you get rid of my face and it's done. That's it. And now the camera you'll see here goes to yellow and then it should go red here in a second. There's our video. We can see I'm back to black over here, which means I'm not recording anything. So here's an important thing to note. I can, just like with all any other camera in the security desk application, I can have specific actions to occur that will bring up and change my field of view. So theoretically, during a threat level event, I can have the system automatically push specific mobile phone views into my operator's field of view. So I don't need to even look for the camera. It will automatically pop up in my field of view. And now uh, in mission control, what you can do is you can actually trigger a workflow and an incident to take place based on somebody turning their mobile phone camera on. I'm in the middle of talking to a very, um, a very interesting end user, I won't give anything away, but they want to be able to, to be notified when somebody starts recording video with their, with their smartphone because it means that there's some sort of emergency event going on. And what they're going to do is use mission control to kick off an incident based on somebody turning on their smartphone. Really, really interesting use case. If you want more information about mission control, leave me a comment down below. So for example, here I've got security desk running. I've got my view the way that I like it. And I'm going to trigger a threat level. And you'll see what happens on the smartphone. I'm just going to come over here and hit this white button. So, so you just heard a bunch of... Uh, Red alert sounds from the Starship Enterprise. Yes, I am a Star Trek fan. Um, Kirk or Picard? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'm, I'm a Picard guy, but we can, we can have a conversation about that later. But you did just hear all, all that stuff go off. And now you see in the mobile app, the top has gone red. Just like in the thick client, the, the background of the thick client has also gone red. So this tells my operator I'm in a threat level state. They've heard the audible sound. They saw the push notification. And by the way, you also saw the push notification happen in the mobile app window as well. So we're telling people, hey, you've got an incident going on. And then the other thing that you see is in tile number three here, we've pushed this phone to a tile. So now if I come back to my mobile app, turn my stream on and hit record, here I am again. And uh, momentarily I should show up on security desk. And there I am. So without the operator having to do anything other than be sitting there and responding, they're getting actionable intelligence from their security officers that are on the ground at the incident. So this wouldn't be a, uh, an episode of the inside track if I didn't leave you with one bonus feature. Uh, again, mobile app based. I will do an episode that's 100% dedicated to the mobile application. But again, this is one of those, these features that I feel like not everybody knows all that much about. So I wanted to put it out there. The bonus feature is about controlling your doors in the mobile application. What do I mean by that? Well, in the main application, in Security Desk, if I click on tile number two here, I can see that the door is closed and the door is locked. And let me get rid of this so we're not distracted. The door is closed and the door is locked and I can unlock the door right from here and I see the door manually open, right? This is the, the run of the mill stuff you do in Security Desk. Well, what if I told you you could do the same thing from the mobile app? 
come up to the hamburger menu. I'm going to go to my area view, Dunder Mifflin, New York, main floor, front door. So we could see that the areas still carry through just like as if I'm in front of the thick client. But you can also now see the status of the door. The door is locked. The door is closed. If the door opens or the door is unlocked, so I'll unlock it from the mobile app. There we go. We see that the door is unlocked. And then in a second here, it should go back to locked. And now it's locked. And you also see that we got that notification in the thick client as well. And there's a log in the audit trail that says the admin user from the mobile application is the one that locked, unlocked that door at this date and time. And we can also see down below the, uh, the two cameras that happen to be associated with that door. So every event that happens on that door automatically has the video associated with that event tagged to these two cameras. That's like your, your basic run of the mill security center uh, functionality. But it's nice to see that I can actually look at those two cameras right from here. You'll also notice I could set the door in maintenance mode if I wanted to. Or I can override the unlock schedule. So I'm going to say I want to keep the door unlocked for a specific duration for the next five minutes. And we can see unlock, overridden. And of course, there's a record of this in the, in the audit trail as well. If you're off site and, you know, the UPS driver happens to show up at, at an inopportune time, you're not there, log into the system from your mobile phone unlock the door, verify who it is because you could see them on the camera. This again is one of these fantastic features that's ported over to the mobile application that I feel like, again, not many people are using. If you knew that these features were available in the mobile app, I think we'd see better adoption of, uh, of mobile app users. So mobile app, turning your smartphone into a security camera, incredibly easy to do. All you have to do is license for the mobile application. All it takes is one license to turn on the mobile server role. Once that role is enabled, you can start recording from your smartphone. If you'd like more information about this, I'll throw a link down below to the product page for the mobile application on the, the Genetech website. Of course, all of my contact info will be down below as well. Shoot me an email uh, or give me a call. Let me know if this is something that you'd like to, uh, to learn more about and I can hook you up with your local Genetech account executive. My name's Phil Coppola. I'm the regional sales manager for Genetech in the great state of New Jersey. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.